So part two of making an elevator. If you haven't seen part one yet, I uh, put a link over here. For this part, you need a camera, which you can put in manual settings. Uh, you need a tripod, Photoshop, Cinema 4D. And we're going to make an HDR. Uh, we're going to do some basic texturing and we're going to use camera mapping to put the video texture on the opening doors. If you don't want to make an HDR image, then just skip ahead. I provided mine in the description below. So what is an HDR image? HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a 32-bit image which contains much more data than your normal 8 or 16-bit image. And as such, it's much more realistic. Let's say that in a normal JPEG image, black is 0 and white is 1. If you're going to decrease the exposure, the white will immediately go through the gray values until it's black. With an HDR image, black is still 0 and white is 1, but white can also be 2 or 3. And if you decrease the exposure there, white will be white for much longer. And it's this data we are going to use to light a 3D scene realistically. So to make a proper HDR image we can wrap around the scene, we need to shoot a whole lot of photos. So grab your camera and start with putting all the settings in manual. Set your aperture on something medium like f8 or 9, so you have a slightly bigger depth of field. If you're standing in a room, that's not really necessary. Set your ISO as low as possible and your shutter speed as high as possible. Put your camera in manual focus and focus on something medium range. Don't make 100 8K pictures because that's going to make the HDR image insanely large and your process insanely slow. If you did, make sure to resize them into Photoshop before stitching. Now, if your camera has bracketing settings, use that. If not, you have to shoot all the photos manually. Put your bracketing settings as big as possible without making the brightest pictures too exposed. Photoshop can stitch all white images. Now, on to shooting itself. Put your tripods close to the spot where you want to put objects into your scene. Then start shooting 45 degrees down. Then shoot the next, but make sure you have a one-third overlap. Do that until you have made full circle. Then put your camera level and do the same. Make sure to have a one-third overlap vertically as well. You might want to plan this out before shooting. Then do the same, but 45 degrees up. If you finish shooting, open up Photoshop. In Photoshop, go to File, Automate and choose Photo Merge. Select Cylindrical, open up all your photos with the same exposure and check all the boxes. Then click OK. After calculating, and voila! My images are overexposed. So, see which images are not being used. Repeat the steps, but do not select the overexposed images. And now it works. Repeat this for all the exposures. Now, before merging the three panoramics into an HDR, check if all your panoramics are the same size or it won't let you merge. Now, go to File, Automate, and choose Merge to HDR Pro. Choose your files and you can check attempt to automatically align source images and hit OK. Almost there. Now the Merge to HDR Pro window opens up. Make sure to check 32-bit, remove Ghost and complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw. Then click Tone in HDR. Unfortunately, Photoshop automatically flattens the image and we don't want that because we want to save it as a Radiance file. So undo that by hitting Ctrl-C on your keyboard and save the file as a Radiance file. And now we're moving on to Cinema 4D. In Cinema, open up the file from the previous tutorial and let's make a sky. Double click in the material panel and double click the new material. Uncheck color and reflectance and check the luminance channel. Load in the HDR image and drag it onto the sky object. You notice that the image is very low res. To fix that, go into the material, go to the editor and change the texture preview size to something higher. Then rotate it to orientate it correctly. Also right click on the sky. Cinema 4D Tags and choose Compositing. Under Tag, uncheck Scene by Camera. Click on the material in the Object panel and type minus 100 for Length U. Now, in order for the HDR to work properly, we have to go to the Render Settings, choose the Physical Renderer and under Effect, choose Global Illumination. Also, make sure you have Alpha Channel checked under Save. So to see some reflections, make a sphere with a radius of, let's say, 75 and make it a child of the elevator object. Make a new material and add a Beckman reflection. Assign it to the sphere. Also, we need something brighter to create a shadow. So let's make a physical sky. Uncheck sky under the basic tab and go to time and location. Put in the information that works for you and orientate the sky correctly by just rotating the physical sky object. Go to frame 95 or something and let's check the render.
you will notice a couple of things. Let's start with the obvious one. We see the shadow catcher in a reflection. And if you go to layer, single layer, and look at the alpha channel, you see the shadow is way too dark. Another thing is that the HDR image looks too high. So this might happen when you do not take the horizontal sequence of photos completely level. It can also happen that your alpha channel includes your shadow catcher. Then go to the shadow catcher material and check include lighting. And while we're at it, go give the shadow catcher object a compositing tag and uncheck scene by reflection, because we don't want the shadow catcher to show up in our reflections. And also give the doors a compositing tag and uncheck scene by reflection, because we don't want them showing up either. Now you can move the sky object, so delete it and make it square. Make it large, maybe 5000 centimeters, and assign the HDR material to it. You don't want Swift to cast shadows because you're in it, so add a compositing tag and uncheck cast shadows and uncheck scene by camera. Position the Swift a bit higher, let's do 2500 and orientate it correctly. Remember to flip it too. You can remove the shadow catcher object in the viewport to make it a bit easier to orientate by clicking on the upper dot here until it's red. Check the render again and yeah, this looks much better. Now we need to give the doors when close the same texture as the background video. So let's do some camera mapping. Go to the frame just before the doors open and make sure the timeline indicator stays there. I'll go to 72. Make a new material and load frame 72 into the color channel. Uncheck reflections, drag the material onto one of the doors and click on the material in the object panel. Let's choose camera mapping, select the solved camera and hit calculate. That's looking good already, but if you scroll through the timeline, the material doesn't stick to the door. To do that, put the timeline indicator back to frame 72 and select the door. Make it editable by clicking here or hitting C and remove the UV and font tag. Then right click on the material and choose generate UVW coordinates and boom ski. Now we see the HDR image is way too bright. So go into the HDR material, set brightness to zero and mix strength to 40 ish. Render again and yeah, it's more like 25% or something. So I realized the elevator isn't looking all that good, but put some modeling work into it, give it some proper textures and maybe change the sphere for something interesting like the word subscribe and there you go. Now render all your frames to a file format that has an alpha channel and import it to After Effects. Put it on top of your video and do some color correction, maybe add a mask and well, you get the idea. So that was it for this week. I hope you learned something. I'm Mark from Mark for Motion and I do weekly tutorials based on monthly short films. Subscribe, ring the bell and I'll see you soon.